Hey TFB TV, what's going on? We're filming this at night for a very particular reason. The reason is, we are going to show you a Vietnam era starlight scope. It's just pretty insane technology. So this guy came into service 1969, 68? 68, 67, 68, yeah. 67, 68, the field, we have a field manual over there that goes for uh, 69, 67. And this thing weighs about six pounds and it was able to be mounted on an M14, a M60, or an M16A1. Uh, the M60 had to require a lot of modification for it, but you could do it um, at the unit level. And essentially what you're looking at here is a PVS-2. AN PVS-2. This is an AN PVS-2, and this was sort of the first generation of night imagers. This isn't infrared technology yet. Correct. Well, actually, they, they had infrared technology. Uh, actually, the M2 carbine during World War II used infrared technology, um, but with infrared, if you have a some special kind of device, you can actually pick up on infrared. Gotcha. So. But this is not actually infrared, so tell us how this works. I don't know how it works. Uh oh. <laughs> well, I think it's, it's passive light. It's yeah, passive. it's using a starlight scope. So what that means is it uses well light from the ambient stars, light. ambient light, light from the stars, light from the moon, sort of stuff like that. Right. It's a passive system. So essentially, if you're at night and there's no moon and there's zero cloud cover and there's nothing out there, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work very well. So uh, when I first got this thing, I thought this was really neat. When I put my eye up to this cup. I couldn't see anything. anything. Yeah. But what it is is you actually have to push it in. Yeah. And there's a little gate that opens up so you can see it. Okay. That way, you know, the green light isn't showing everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you do have a, a focus ring or adjustment ring. Uh, up top, we have the battery pack. And the battery pack is a BA100 that lasts for around 100 hours, but right. that's the original one and you've modified it. Uh, it. It came modified for me. It actually runs off just off of four AA batteries. Gotcha. And it just fits in the same compartment that the original one would have fit Correct. into. Right. Gotcha. Right on top. Cool. Uh, the mounting system on the other side, we do actually have a mechanical zero, so you have elevation and you do have windage here. Now let me just point out, this is a mechanical zero, so what that means is as you are adjusting the windage and the elevation, it's moving the entire scope up and down. Yes. There is no reticle inside of there that's going along with it. Mm -hmm. And we found it not to be the most accurate. No. Even at 20 meters. We no. were shooting at 20 meters and I tried to zero it on to 20 and after a couple adjustments, the thing was completely off. Right. Yeah. Um, this is a, it, it is a bit of a shaky mount. Yeah. Um, you know, it is what it is. It's not very accurate. No. Um, so an M14, how, how much does an M14 weigh? Like 10 pounds? About nine, about, about nine, nine pounds. Same as an M1 gram. So you add this guy on top of it. Now you're dealing with pounds. like 16 pounds. Yeah, it's actually right around the same weight as a BAR. Oh boy. <laughs> wow. So this mounts on a proprietary mount that goes on an M14 in this section. However, um, the M16 version would have a different sort of mount that would clip to the carrying handle of an M16A1. Right. Okay, and that's what that, for all those who are wondering, that's what that little hole is mm -hmm. inside the carrying handle of an M16A1 that you can mount the scope to. Right. Cool. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, just a simple on-off switch. Gotcha. Uh, up top, we do have a filter. Um, you can see the, through this in case the ambient light is too bright. You just pop that right off. And you do have a focusing ring up top as well. Okay. And I think the filter is a lot more to protect it during the day. At right. least I know for current uh, infrared stuff, I know this isn't infrared, but for current infrared stuff, they have filters that are on during the day so light doesn't damage them Correct. and that kind of thing. Correct. And tell us about the, the Hebrew markings on there. So this was actually, it's, it's built in the U.S., U.S. manufactured, but it was actually built for the Israelis it's to be shipped over to them to be used. Okay. And that's why we've got both Hebrew markings on the outside of the scope, and we also have it on the inside where the reticle and the stadial lines right. are as well. Right. Got to mention here, it is a four power uh, optic. It is not a one power, so you do get a little bit of magnification on it when you are using it. So that was a plus for soldiers in the field during the Vietnam era. Mm -hmm. um, do we know much about its usage during Vietnam? Um, I've talked to a couple of Vietnam vets. They said it was, you know, it, it worked fine. Um, probably more in for base defense because this is really kind of heavy to kind of hump out in the boonies. Yeah. Um, I, I think we saw when we were shooting it at the 100 yard range, 100 yards is probably about max for a good grouping. And let, let us just reemphasize, so we were using Ventura, we were using uh, Aguilar ammunition which is given to us by Ventura, thank you very much Ventura, real shout out, they're a, a company that really helps us keep these sorts of videos going and we really appreciate the support from them. But we were using um, Aguila ammunition 
And this is a Polytech M14. Yes. M1, it's called an M14S, right? Or Yeah, M14S. M4, yeah. yeah, so it's a Polytech, so it's a Chinese M14 remake using ball ammunition, using um, the uh, the optic here. So we're not exactly using match grade ammo in an M21, no. which what this would have been probably intended for. However, let me just say, even with all those limiting factors, we were able to put, I would say, a milk jug size group down range, yeah. about a foot off. Man size, um, yeah. Yeah, if this were, if we were using match grade ammo, and if we were using a legitimate M21, which the M21s back then um, were picked off with match grade barrels and right. national match barrels and sights and that sort of deal. Or some of them, I think, were semi free floated. But if we were using a legitimate M21 with match grade ammunition, we probably could have shrunk that down by about half. So I'm saying you could probably get a six inch group at night. So I did notice there is a peculiar way to sight this thing. When you're shooting it, you don't actually have your cheek on the stock whatsoever. Yeah. If you notice, this thing is offset way. Completely offset. Completely way off. You're, you're just like essentially free gunning it. Yeah. And if you put your eye too close to the ocular lens, you're getting major scope bite. Yeah. It's not bad as if it was an actual scope, that's what that eyepiece is for, um, but it is definite scope bite, that's for sure. At the time that this would have come out in the 1960s, this would have been groundbreaking technology. Oh, absolutely. For the guys in the field. Today we look at this and we think it's you know cumbersome, heavy, inaccurate, um, completely inefficient for a number of reasons. But then again, 50 years from now, we're probably gonna be looking at the thermal, object, thermal optics and the infrared scopes that we have today on the market. We're gonna say those are completely inaccurate. Um, garbage scopes as well. But for back then, this was actually cutting edge technology yeah, for guys exactly. in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And for the Israeli uh, IDF guys, this was used later. Well, thanks guys for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Um, we hope you enjoyed learning about the Starlight Scope. And we thought it was best. We actually intentionally waited till nightfall to film this because we wanted to show you what it probably would have looked like at night when it was intended to be used. So. Uh, once again, we hope you all have a good day, and we look forward to seeing you next week. And thank you very much, Corey, for appearing on the show. Not a problem. Absolutely. All right, guys, have a good day.